There's still a ton to talk about when it comes to the 2019 NHL Entry Draft and the Vancouver Canucks. Let's go over the last hoorah of drafting and trading up for the Vancouver Canucks as James Sibolsky on Twitter basically leaked the story here right now. Heard over the weekend that the Canucks and the Blackhawks had discussed swapping the 3rd and 10th overall picks so Vancouver could jump up to get Bowen Byram. But Chicago wanted Vancouver to take Brent Seabrook and the remaining 5 years at $6.875 million on his contract. Thus, the deal died. So I'm putting this idea out here, the Vancouver Canucks might have been able to acquire a bottom pairing right-handed defenseman who is 6 foot 3, 220 pounds. He's from Richmond. He's a hometown boy. He's from the same city that Troy Stetcher is from. And he's at a terrible, terrible $6.875 million until 2024. Did I mention he's 34 years old? Yeah, that's one of the worst contracts in the league, and definitely like one or two when it comes to defenseman contracts, but Brent Seabrook is a guy that the Vancouver Canucks could have been able to acquire if they wanted to take him on, and the compensation for that would have been moving up to get Bowen Byram, which is a very interesting dilemma. Jim Benning ultimately, you know, we know the story, he didn't go with it, obviously, because he drafted Pud Colson at number 10, so... I put this question out to you, what do you think about this? Would you have done this if you were in Jim Benning's place? What are the long-term benefits? What are the short-term benefits? Obviously, if it's a long-term game, Seabrook stays on the team for a long time. He doesn't get off the books until 2024, and he consistently plays out his bottom six role, gives up a few goals here and there. Seabrook is really not the defenseman that he used to be, and, you know, you're not going to expect... Seabrook to play like Prime Seabrook when he's 34, so obviously there's a reason Chicago wanted to give that up in a potential 3-10 to 10 swap, and also there is the implications that have to go around the other way. If the Blackhawks drop down to 10, who do they take? Because if Vancouver takes Bowen Byron number 3, let's say Turcotte goes number 4 to Colorado, a guy like Dylan Cousins goes 5 to LA, and all of a sudden, the draft is different. Actually, we'll leave Moritz Sider at 6, because that's the Stevie Y signature right there. But there are a lot of different ideas that we could look at. Kirby Doc might go as high as 4th or 5th overall, depending on if he's available. So, who really knows? Maybe Chicago goes down and they draft Cole Caulfield. And they keep Caulfield and Dabrinka together. That would be amazing. But... Chicago, if they really did want to move down, that was the price that they would be willing to pay. And at the same time, the Vancouver Canucks would have drafted Byram, no Pud Colson, no big power forward Russian player in our system, and things are different. And I know a lot of Canucks fans, I saw a lot of Canucks fans actually, on Twitter, some on Reddit, saying that the difference between Byram and Pud Colson is not too much. That's one perspective that I saw, and thus it justifies to the people saying that, that this no deal was pretty okay. And frankly, you know I'm gonna have to agree. Sure, Brent Seabrook is Brent Seabrook, and sure he's less than what Tyler Myers is gonna make, but even a guy like Tyler Myers I can look at and I can say, yeah, well he's better than Seabrook. Seabrook is going to be bad, and he's going to have this bad contract, and Myers, although he is going to have a worse contract, is a better player, and he's probably going to be a better player the entirety of both of their potential contracts next season. Because Brent Seabrook is on the decline, he's already bad now, and he's still got like five years remaining, and that's going to be even worse of a Seabrook by the time he's at the end of that contract. So overall, I'm kind of happy that we didn't do this. I know I can understand some people saying, yeah, I'd rather overpay for Seabrook than overpay for Myers because it costs less. And sure, that's a very valid point of view too. It's just in my personal philosophy, I'd rather have Myers. And honestly, no, I'd rather have Strawman. Yeah, give me Anton Strawman, I like him. But apparently we're really in on Myers. I haven't made a video about that yet. I'll make... A video probably when it comes closer and closer to the imminent signing that awaits us because you know we're gonna give him a 7x7 seven seven deal. <sighs> right-handed defenseman. 
They're a handful, aren't they? Hope you enjoyed this video. Social Dash Show slash 99. And bye.